Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to a continuation of our Africa Pack DLC showcase for Planet Zoo. I am really excited for today's episode, folks, because we are adding the Fennec Fox, and the Fennec Fox is absolutely adorable in real life, and they are, it's hard to say equally adorable because, you know, you, when you see them in real life, they're so, well, they're real. But the developers have done an excellent job of bringing that adorableness into the game, and uh, it's just so fun to see them run around, play, oh, it's so good, it's so good. Uh, but I'm also really excited to talk about today's um, enclosure because it sort of has some personal touches for me, uh, some personal aspects, I guess, and uh, it might be a bit unexpected, and I, I, I like the unexpected. Uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you'll know that. So the Fennec Fox is primarily found in North Africa, uh, across the Sahara Desert. And if I'm not mistaken, it is actually the uh, national animal of Algeria. I, I'm like 90% sure. Uh, worth double checking, but I'm fairly certain if not the national animal, it is very important in Algeria at least. And uh, so I thought, well, why don't we touch into something Algerian? Let's get inspiration over there. Uh, now, some of you will know already if you follow the channel, I've lived in Morocco, and Morocco is obviously not Algeria. Uh, but it is it is an, it is a neighbor, and they share a lot of common history. Uh, so I was kind of like thinking back on my life there as like a way to maybe find some inspiration from my own kind of like personal experiences, I suppose. And uh, and something stood out to me that I quite liked for a couple of reasons. So we already did Moorish architecture in this showcase mini series, right? We did the Moorish architecture for the uh, meerkats, basically right off the bat, showed off some of the new pieces, and I enjoyed doing that, and there's some more new pieces to explore as well, and I'm sure we'll get to that eventually when we go down to Elitsu South or something. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll play around with that stuff a bit more. But I thought, well, apart from that, what other architectural styles come to mind? Of course, there's like your, you know, stereotypical bazaar style architecture, but I don't want to do that, right? We've done that before as well. I didn't want to do that. And uh, I remember one of my... Uh, <laughs> let's call it most interesting memories, I guess, uh, from Morocco. This is actually one of my, my regrets, I should say, uh, from my time in Morocco, was uh, we went on a family trip to Volubilis, which is actually uh, some major Roman ruins in Morocco. And, uh, and my regret isn't having gone there. My regret is not having appreciated uh, what I was standing among you know wh where i was i i was i i didn't <laughs> how do i put this i didn't pay that trip uh the the dues it deserved as it were and it's still it's one of my regrets that I, I wish i had i wish i had embraced that trip a lot more than i actually had and i wish i had uh you know uh i, I guess consumed more of that trip than i actually ended up uh doing it's one of my things one of the things i really want to do is go back to morocco just in general as well but also i want to go back to volubilis and i want to experience it properly uh and and do now uh what i didn't do back then but volubilis uh very famous roman ruins in morocco as you can imagine that same kind of uh cultural heritage or, or historical heritage, if you want to call that, uh, exists in Algeria as well. So that sent me down a bit of a, a rabbit hole of doing research. Is like, okay, well, what about Algeria? There's there's famous Roman ruins across the entire kind of Mediterranean and, and beyond as well. Uh, massive, uh, massive empire that they had. Uh, and so I was like, all right, well, I'm a little curious. Like, well, how, you know, how prevalent slash how present are Roman ruins in Algeria? Uh, quite a bit is the answer to that question. So for me, that was the hook. I was like, all right, you know what? I have this personal kind of like, I guess, memory or attachment uh, to the region. Again, it's it's Morocco. I, I want to be crystal clear. Not Algeria, I know, but North Africa, neighbors. There's that, that that's that, there was that tie-in for me personally. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there was that, and there was the opportunity to do something maybe a little unexpected, uh, to use the classical architecture pieces from the base game for a North African animal. Uh, while tapping into history, like history long gone, right? Uh, and uh, I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a nice opportunity to explore some of these pieces again in a new context. Again, if you follow the franchise mode, that's why you 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 know the kind of things that draw me uh, to certain enclosure spaces and designs, and and these kinds of cultural and historical heritages are are uh, are a big part of it. Roman ruins, man, they're, they're ancient. And like, I, I took a look at a bunch of pictures. I get, fa I go down a rabbit hole. I get fascinated by this stuff. And you look at all these beautiful, like, examples of city planning. And you look at these beautiful examples of, like, like, 
There's something mesmerizing about the grid patterning and like the columns and stuff that remain versus the ones that have collapsed and, and the wall sections that have just you know, disappeared into space. Uh, it's 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 really quite something. Now, I try to make reference to a couple of these kinds of things right now. The thing is the mosaic style, the art style here isn't really right. And the thing is, funnily enough, at least off the top of my head, I don't think the game has... Um, Maybe I'm mistaken. I, I can't remember for the life of me now. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't think the game has that many like Greco-Roman style mosaics, right? You've got like the uh, the more you know uh, like Arab style uh, mosaics. Um, they're specifically you know floresque or or or, or geometric, like arabesque, uh, to avoid the depictions of animals. Uh, it's a religious um, kind of a limitation. Uh, in Islam, you're not allowed to depict animals or anything. Any, any, no living thing can be depicted. And so oftentimes calligraphy or uh, geometric shapes and stuff take priority for, for, for decoration instead to beautiful effect. And so, you know, they, there's a distinct style there. A lot of the Indian pieces, uh, mosaics as well, have their, uh, you know, draw from... I'm actually not sure. I, I think a lot of the draw for the Indian mosaic pieces are also from, uh, like, Islamic era, um, rather Islamic motifs, I, I should say. Uh, I don't know if they have any, like, Greco-Indian, because uh, Greco-Indian history and, and, and cultural exchange and architectural exchange is a whole thing as well. A anyway, sorry, I could, again, I could go down this for, for <laughs> hours. I love this kind of stuff. I, I find this kind of stuff absolutely fascinating. But all that to say this, the, uh, the mosaic you're seeing in the centerpiece over here is probably not entirely even close to historically appropriate or accurate, but it's to get an idea across a lot of these times, these ruins, you will come across these mosaics. And in fact, if I if I recall correctly, uh, Volubilis did have uh, some mosaic pattern. And I think the, uh, the ruins that I was referencing in Algeria also had mosaic patterning that was still uh, standing or, you know, standing, uh, visible. A little dirty, a little cracked up and stuff, but still visible. And and a lot of Roman ruins actually, in fact, do. So I, I, well, let's make a reference to that, um, even if it's not the most appropriate type of uh, tiles to use. Uh, I thought it'd be nice to, to, to at least to kind of touch on that. And, uh, and here you can see, like, uh, again, I, so the game's going to crash right now, and more on that after the time lapse, but you can see the layout I'm, I'm putting down of these, like, I don't know, city blocks. Um, maybe this is one complex, and it had these, like, you, you don't know. You know, you, you don't know what it is, but it's imagery that we often see, we're so familiar with, I guess, if you, if you, you know, if you like to Google archaeological dig sites of urban centers, uh, in you know in, in, throughout history then it's something you'll see often is uh this kind of a layout these like pillars and the the square grid layout and stuff it, I find it really interesting and it, it really it it's mesmerizing in its own way I, I quite like it it's like it tells a story I guess like oh you know what what used to be here what what was this place um was it something special is that an uh, altar in the middle was this a religious center um it, it's certainly not like a coliseum or anything, um, but what was this place? What was this place? Uh, I, I don't have the answer to that question. It's uh, it's a fun little, I, I guess, experiment or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but I think it, it it looks. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Maybe maybe I shouldn't be so happy with how the space looks, but I feel like it looks like what it's supposed to look like. It looks like what I'm referencing. It looks like uh, this massive, uh, yeah, North African dig site uh, of uh, of of Roman era ruins in, uh, you know, somewhere like Algeria or perhaps Morocco or where have you. Again, I'm, I'm going for Algeria, even though my personal connection is to Morocco, going for, for Algeria because of the Algerian um, importance of the Fennec Fox. But folks, as I put down some of these trees over here, which we'll touch more on actually after the time lapse, I must unfortunately say that is the end of the time lapse. So I hope you guys had a good time. Let me know your thoughts down below as always. We're going to dive into the regular speed and take a look at these absolutely adorable animals in action. So folks... Back to regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse and uh, pretty pleased with how that one ended up. I mean, hopefully it was uh, unexpected for at least some of you. Uh, and also hopefully uh, at least some of you see the uh, connection I was drawing and, and why I went with uh, what I went with. I'm sure I described it all during the time lapse itself. And uh, now we can dive right on into our brand new animal. I've been looking forward to this one for a very long time because they're absolutely adorable and i'm really excited to see uh you know how they kind of interact with the space how they uh, how they move around how they uh play and all that kind of stuff i am very very excited one thing i'm nervous about though is that this 
game has been crashing a lot today. I'm not sure why, but anytime I move the camera, it seems, over here, the game crashes. Before I recorded, um, like before... So the, the, the time lapse had been started like five times. But those first four times, the game crashed because I moved the camera too close to this little corner over here, like this cursed corner. And then the fifth time was the charm, I guess. And that's the uh, the time lapse you saw. But literally, I got nothing done for so very long because every time I'd move the camera over here right at the beginning of the time lapse, it would crash. And then again, it crashed in the middle of this uh, previous time lapse as well. I'm going to try and be very cognizant of that uh, to, to not, not get too close up there and uh, and just kind of keep my, my camera uh, around these parts over here. Hopefully, you know, knowing my luck, these foxes will spend most of their time up over there, but uh, but we'll... We'll cross that bridge when we get there, I suppose. Go ahead and sort that out as well. There we go. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and take a look at the... I'm sure the thumbnail and title gave it away. Panic Fox. Look at this. I mean, just wow. <laughs> right? These guys are adorable. I've been so excited to get these guys in. And uh, I'm glad to have sort of a an idea that I think works for them and is fun and isn't just kind of like a planes kind of a space or anything like that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing them kind of, you know, jump around and just have a good time. The Fennec Fox, Vulpus, Zerda, of least concern, population in the wild is unknown. The Fennec Fox is a small species of canid that lives in the Sahara Desert. The fur of the back, head, and tail is sandy colored, and the fur of the legs, belly, and face are white. The Fennec Fox's most distinctive feature is its extremely large pointed ears. The fennec fox is very small, measuring 7.2 inches to 8.8 .8 inches tall at the shoulder, with a head body length of 13.6 to 16 inches. Their tail is up to 10 inches long, and their ears measure 3.6 to 4 inches in length. Like, that is literally the... That, that's, that is a half, give or take, you know, a couple of fractional inches. That is a half their height uh, to their shoulders. 3.6, 7.2, 4, 8.8. So like I said, you know, give or take wild. They weigh between 1.76 and 4.18 pounds. Males are slightly larger than females. The fennec fox is not considered an endangered species, and their population size is unknown but thought to be numerous. They're also, if I'm not mistaken, and feel free to correct me if I'm, you know, if I'm wrong, if you know better, but I'm pretty sure fennec foxes are also sometimes kept as exotic pets. I don't think so much in North America and Europe. I'm not 100% sure though, but I, I vaguely feel like I've, I've read this before. Uh, I also want to point out, this is actually a very short descriptor over here. Uh, the sentence structure is also kind of funky. It, I think the number of times it says, it's, it's like each sentence, every other sentence starts with the words of the fennec fox. We got the fennec fox, no, fennec fox, the fennec fox, a two for there, and then a no, and then another no, three no's, and another fennec fox. It just it felt kind of weird because it went like back to back a couple times. Yeah, it was strange. Well, it's also very short though. Like if we take a look at the, I don't know, let's take a look at the, uh, the rhino here. Right, they had they had a lot to say about the rhino. Um, I mean, if we take a look at again, like everyone gets like two to three paragraphs, right? It feels like the uh, fennec fox. I understand it's a small animal, but it got the treatment of the um, the, uh, the 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 not habitat, but um, what are they called? Like not exhibit. Uh, you, you know what I mean? The, the smaller animals that go into the, the little boxes. The word is escaping me right now. So I don't know. I feel, feel a little bad about our, our fox buddies over here. They're so cute. They're just so adorable. They look like video game characters. They're just so cute. I like foxes in general, and the fennec fox, I mean, just like, come on. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> natural habitat. So a huge tract of land uh, in uh, in North Africa over here, of course, across the Sahara. Uh, I don't know if I touched on this. I actually, I guess I didn't touch on this during the time lapse, but uh, the place that I make reference to, uh, Volubilis, uh, is like roughly here-ish. You're going to have to pardon my, my roughness here, but... Um, I vaguely remember. It's like it's just outside of the range of the fennec fox. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a bit fuzzier. But that was, again, the inspiration for, you know... Well, I'm, I'm sure I talked about it. But I just want to point out, I think it's like roughly around hereabouts. Yeah, I think so. Ish. Over to... Again, sorry. Uh, primarily, primarily, the uh, biome is the desert biome. Of course, again, they live across the, the Sahara, right? Um, and uh, they don't need too much space. But, of course, we uh, ignore that around these parts. No need to climb, no no swimming or anything like that. Relatively simple animal, relatively simple. Species data, group size is 1 to 10, up to 6 males, up to 6 females, fantastic. Male and female bachelor group sizes are 1 to 5 across the board. Dominance is an alpha male, alpha female system. Now hang on, 
Oh yeah, okay, they are Canada. Right, I think it even mentions, yeah. Um, all right, okay, that makes sense, but something we're familiar with, I suppose. Uh, mating system is monogamous, relations with humans is shy, and guests can into the habitat. <gasps> I need to go to a zoo where I can hang out with some fennec foxes. You, you get foxes in, in, in Canada, like in the suburbs of Toronto and stuff, at least. You, you get foxes, like, running around and stuff. Uh, so I've seen them relatively up close, but, uh, but yeah, it's a little different uh, when they're used to more human interaction. Well, hang on a second. Oh, man, I wish I'd... We already have a walkthrough enclosure, but I could very easily change this into a, uh, into a, into a, into a walkthrough by making this into a door. You know what? We'll save that for our franchise mode playthrough, maybe. We'll do, we'll do a walkthrough enclosure maybe for our franchise mode, uh, zoo, and, and so this is something a little different. Hmm. I, I like to try and, like, guess at the animals as best as possible before I build their, uh, their enclosures, uh, just based on, like, what I, what I know, uh, ahead of time. Uh, the only thing I'll sometimes check is size if I feel a little uncertain about how much size they need, especially after the uh, the uh, giant otter incidents of the aquatic DLC. Uh, but moving on. Size is an average of 15.8 among males, 14.8 inches among females. Life expectancy is 12 years across the board, and weight is 2.86 pounds across the board. Sexual maturity at 1 year, sterility at 8. Number of offspring per mating event is 2 to 5. 1 month gestation, 12 month interbirth, and easy reproduction in captivity, supposedly. Fennec foxes are very social animals that live in family packs. In an average pack, there is an alpha male and alpha female, their young adult offspring, and a litter of pups less than a year old. In a fox pack, there is an alpha male and an alpha female, and their first and second generation offspring. Packs are familial. The alphas are monogamous and do not mate with any other individuals. As the female is approaching estrus, the alpha male and female will bond. The female fox will have six to eight fertile days in the breeding season. The hormonal changes and smell of her urine will alert the alpha male to her receptive state. The alphas will mate multiple times during this period. The male fennec fox will become aggressive and extremely defensive of the female and their den after mating. Alphas will have one litter per year. On average, they will have a litter of two to four pups, although may have up to six. Pups weigh approximately 1.75 ounces at birth. Again, like, nothing to me. I mean, I guess it's like a, what, like a, what's, what's, what's 1.75 ounces? Like, Ah, use grams. <laughs> After giving birth, the female will remain in the den with her pups for two weeks, relying on the male to bring her food. She'll make trips out of the den when the pups are two to five weeks old, returning frequently to feed them. Pups leave the den for the first time at five weeks old and steadily gain independence. They are weaned by two to three months old and fully independent by six months old. Young foxes stay with their parental pack until they are between one and two years old. Young foxes leave their pack when they reach sexual maturity or when competition for food within the pack becomes too high. They may live alone or in sibling groups for a time. Lone foxes may partner up with another lone fox of the opposite sex and search for territory. Once located, these two foxes will start their own pack and become the alpha male and female. Okay, interesting. Now, question is, it sounds like eventually every fox is expected to leave like they have their young adult offspring and a litter of pups right so it sounds like once those young adult offspring become you know adult offspring ready to mate and have their own children they move on i assume planet zoo will let you keep a pack of you know again up to six males up to six females before you start having issues i guess that's when quote unquote the food starts to run low uh, as as far as the animals can feel you imagine have like 20, having like 20 of these guys in a, in, a, in a little enclosure, running around having a good time? Interesting. All right. Uh, research status over here. This is all familiar stuff. Again, they have the Curio Ball, which I'm quite curious about. I'm curious just to see how they play with it. The tennis ball as well. The Curio Ball seems to be a little bit larger. I imagine they just knock it around. I don't know. We'll see. I keep, they're not going to play fetch. Who's going to throw the ball? Uh, fun fact number one. The Fennec Fox is the smallest canid species. Fun fact number two. Fennec foxes are highly vocal and will chatter, whimper, wail, growl, and shriek to communicate with their packmates. Adorable. Fun fact number three. The fennec fox has very large ears that dissipate heat and are able to hear prey underground. Yes, I, I, I know about this. It's pretty impressive, actually. Hear prey underground. is wild. Make, obviously, it makes sense, but still, it's still cool to think about. It's just ears. Fun fact number four. The paw pads of the fennec fox are covered in thick fur to allow them to walk on the hot sands of the Sahara Desert. And fun fact number five. Like many desert-dwelling animals, the fennec fox does not rely on access to water sources. Instead, they can subsist on dew and the water contained in their food. Okay, now, hang on a sec. You say that game, but does that mean I can get rid of their, uh, 
The little uh, pipe over here. I. I mean, maybe. But I. I mean, I, again, you might not rely on access to water, but I'm sure you still would prefer access to water, right? It is is how I'm assuming it plays out. We'll find out. Interspecies enrichment, there is none. Now, it was actually pointed out to me that I skipped over the southern white rhino uh, fun facts, and I apologize for that. Let's quickly go over some of these. So, uh, with the southern white rhinoceros, fun fact number one, the southern white rhino is the most numerous rhino species. Wow, <laughs> that's wild to think about. From, uh, from, from, from 20 to plenty, I suppose, eh? It's, it's, it's sad to think about that this is the most numerous rhino species. Like, that's, to me, that's sad. Uh, happy story, you know, again, from 20 to 18,000, that's huge, that's amazing, that's awesome, it's worth, it deserves the accolades, I'm so glad we've managed to do that, but the fact that, that that is the most numerous rhino species, that's wild to me. Fun fact number two, the southern white rhino is the largest pure grazer in the world. What does pure grazer mean? I have to look that term up, I'm not familiar with that. Fun fact number three, 93% of the entire population of Southern White Rhino lives in South Africa. Fair enough. And fun fact number four, although the, South, although the Southern White Rhino has no natural predators, they have been seen with scars as a result of fighting with hyenas. Oh, interesting. That explains the scars on, uh, on one of ours, right? And fun fact number five, this one's a meteor one. The Southern White Rhino has mutualistic relationships with cattle egrets, red-billed oxpeckers, and cape sterlings, or sorry, starlings. Three bird species that remove parasites from their skin. Yeah, this I've... I think there's a lot of photography of, of fun fact number five in action. I uh, imagine folks have seen it. It's it's uh, It was my first exposure, at least, to, to mutualistic relationships. Um, and I, I just find it very interesting. You, you get, get it a lot. And it... Uh, yeah, it's kind of... It's an interesting how nature kind of, like, clicks into place sometimes. But that's just a quick review of the, uh, the, the white rhino. We're, of course, focusing today on the fennec fox. Let's go ahead and get some of these boxes in over here over to our animal market uh over to the fennec box i love that we can do that now still got to get used to it now let's go ahead and get uh oh dear some of these stats are oh oof. okay imad i suppose let's go ahead and grab you buddy and let's get uh amira i suppose these are really not good uh good options oh yeah pet you can see pet as well breeding program i i i wonder if um Again, I've read that they're, they're kept as exotic pets, and like, you know, sometimes that means that they're well kept as exotic pets, and sometimes it means that they're poorly kept as exotic pets, and, uh, I just hope, uh, more of the former than the latter, I suppose. Let's go ahead and get these foxes in here. We do have the uh, staff entrance on this side, because, again, I was too terrified to put anything down over there, or even move my camera over there, truth be told. But, uh, yeah, really quite, uh, quite pleased with this. Again, it's not, not overdone, not overstated, not overly complicated, but it is... You know, it communicates an idea, it communicates a space, it communicates a, a sense of, at least in my opinion, history. Uh, there's a bit of a story over here, and of course it's got its connections with, uh, you know, Algeria, and then my personal connections as well, which was an extension of the references I wanted to make, or, or I suppose you could say was a foundation of some of the references I wanted to make. It was actually quite nice, you know, with the, the grass and everything. I don't often compliment the grass in this game, but that's, uh, that's quite nice. And I, I do quite like this, like... Those trees in the back. Those trees, by the way, these are some really nice trees. I think they're new. I'm not 100% sure. But, uh... I think they came with the... No, I guess... Yeah, the Africa pack. I really quite like them. They, there's a... How does it just... They look quite nice. They are nice height. They have a nice shape. Very nice models. Uh, and I just wanted to point that out. Like, these are... I don't, again, I don't often point them out. The last time I think I pointed out... Uh, uh, plants like that was from the aquatic DLC when we got these guys. I love these guys. The giant rhubarb plant. Like, these guys are beautiful. Uh, just that they're so full and vibrant and, and the shape is nice and the details are nice. And I, I quite like these uh, these palm trees as well. I find them to be... There's a few uh, versions. I don't know. I just find their shapes to be interesting. Nice. Alright, where are my fennec foxes? Well, I guess while we wait for the fennec foxes, we could take a look at uh, the rhinos a little bit. We are yet to have a baby rhino. What are, what are you... You're I understand you want to hog the space, but that's a little much, don't you think? Come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> that's rude. All right, get stuff, get stuff. Oh, here we go. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, you're so small. Oh, I'm so pleased. 
Off you go, buddy. The tones kind of match the uh, the space. Don't go too far that way now. I can't even. I can't get the camera low enough to make them feel at all large. Oh, maybe you'll get onto this mound over here. Oh, look! Oh, look at him go! Oh, so fast! Oh no! So cute! Whoa! <laughs> oh my God! I'm so pleased. This is the best. This is absolutely the best. I'm so pleased. Hey, buddy. Wah. Off you go. I'm just- I'm beaming. This is amazing. I love this. <laughs> They're so fast. No, don't go too far that way. I love the little skid to a stop animation. Oh, look at that. Come on, turn this way. Turn this way. Give me that thumbnail shot. No, don't run away. Yeah, come on. This way. This way, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, what a cutie. What an absolute cutie. I love this. No, no. Oh, <laughs> damn it. I was like, ah, oh, perfect shot. So fast. Just so fast. Zipping around. I'm having so much fun. Hey, buddy. Oh, it got a little wet. You can see the, the, the toweling off in the distance. I don't know what it's called. Like you know, when they sh sh shaking it off, I suppose. Oh, it's so cute. Okay. I need to check real quick. I did edit the settings. It was pointed out in the comments that like we should edit these settings so that we can actually make sure that the animals are happy with the spaces. Excellent point. Uh, so I did edit the settings and uh, and and we are able to now see their general uh, vibes about the space that they're in. Animal has escaped. You guys need to stop running around, running out. I All right, gotta keep an eye out for for our rhinos having a. Uh, Baby as well, because I'm pretty sure we have one on route. Notification timeline, yep. Where are we? Where are we? This swarm, we were expecting one. And check really quickly over here. Leave, not you. Got some babies here. Feb of twenty of year twenty three. Okay. So some time yet. Some time yet. Where'd they go? So small. All right, one more. Oh, there we go. Hey, buddy. Oh, this, is so, this is so small. It makes me so happy. Uh, can they? No, they can't. Of course, they're tiny. They're like, they're the size of these steps. How can they get up there? All right, let's see if we can't sort this out then. Let's see if we can't sort this out. I, I had a feeling this would be uh, the case. It was worth a shot, though. Bring you out, I suppose. Like here. I'll have to pull these guys over and up. Here, there we go. I think it maintains the integrity of our uh, of our design and stuff. Not it doesn't like break it or anything. I just want to fill the uh, the gap in down there, but I just want to make sure they can use this first. Hang on, everybody. Oh nope, nope. There. Still can't. Eh? This stuff can be a little weird sometimes. There was a time when it would uh, work very smoothly. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Nice. They can get up there. Beautiful. Beauty. Look at this. Oh, man. Having way too much fun. Just chasing these guys around. Play with the ball. Play with the ball. No. Back here. You're so cute. This thing. I love foxes. And the fennec fox, like I was saying earlier. Most among them. Not going too far up there. Of course, you gotta spend all their time up there. Don't tempt me. They're tempting me. Trying to get me to do it. Take a risk. I don't know. I think it's like right in that corner over there. It's like this cursed spot. Ooh. Like a nature photographer. Hiding in this corner up over here. Come on. Nope. <laughs> Just going their separate ways. Not interested. They're amazing. They're so well done. They're so well done. Fur gets wet. 
Fake it off, I assume. Hey, buddy. Oh, look at that. Look at the fur and stuff, though. And look at those ears. Look at the face. Look at everything. I just, I can't even. <laughs> Amazing. I was really hoping to get after that. Little tippy taps. They're like, they have all the features that make humans uh, want to like care for something. Like that's the thing, there are certain features uh, that, that um, young animals uh, have uh, that, 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 uh, that are shared among, uh, like, uh, 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 from, from my understanding, it's shared among young from, from all animals. Um, and, uh, and for us, you know, it's, uh, like, our babies have a lot of these, uh, it's just so cute. They just distracted me constantly. Uh, they, they have, like, these, uh, visual cues, I suppose, that, uh, that make us want to, uh, take care of them, to nurture them, make sure they're safe, etc., etc., etc. Uh, and a lot of, uh, animals... Uh, have that as well. Oh my god. And when animals have that, we are naturally more inclined to love them, I guess. That was a weird thing with the tongue there. Uh, but yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if that applies across, um, all... or at least many animals, where it's just like, you don't wanna... you don't wanna harm, uh... you're less likely to harm the young of another animal, uh, but obviously there are some animals that specifically prey on, uh, on, on pups and babies and all that kind of stuff, naturally. I, I'm, I'm obviously talking in very broad strokes over here. In fact, I believe owls, if I'm not mistaken, tend to prefer, uh, baby, uh, like fennec fox puppies, uh, as a, as an opportunity, basically. Put it, uh, put it softly. <laughs> Oh man, where can I go and and, and, and see uh and, and and visit where can I visit a zoo as a walk in fennec fox enclosure? I'm surprised that I did not think that was a thing. Again, like foxes aren't dangerous for humans, but and, and I, I imagine fennec foxes especially so because they're so tiny, but still wouldn't have expected to be able to actually go into an enclosure. Because again, entering the enclosure isn't just for uh, for the humans; it's for the uh, the animals as well, right? It's like not just a matter of like, oh yeah, you're safe in there. It's also like, well, you know, they might be disturbed by your presence. Uh, you might bring in some disease, or who knows? Oh my god! Look at those eyes. What are they, what are they so dead set on? You you want to play with that thing? Are you like? Look at the tail, man! I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm just losing my mind here. <laughs> I've done such a good job with them. I just want to pick this little guy up and just like... Oh, that's what you got your eyes on. Alright, okay. Ah, it's so short-lived. I wish they were longer, man. I wish they were longer. Every once in a while, it's just like you get like a short play animation. It's like, oh, just give me like, give me like a good 30 seconds of a play animation. Ah, oh, that lasted like five seconds. Expecting more. Yeah, they have a hard time navigating the, uh, the fine ridges and stuff from time to time. Why are you guys going to tuck in down over here? Oh, I didn't realize this was... Almost feels like light's kind of shining through, eh? Oh, did you see that? Spin around and lie down. This is nice. I, I, I want to make this little, like, uh, corner over here for them to, like, cool off and hide from the sun and all that. Nice, small, kind of a cubby-type space, almost. Good stuff. Good stuff. Vet requested. Seems okay, no? Have you bonded? Uh, not yet. Not quite yet. I haven't seen them play in this yet. This is the same tunnel thing that the the meerkats have, but I want to see what the uh, the the Fennec fox uh, animation is for the uh, branch. I guess we'll call it. Rhino's just chilling over here. 
I like seeing them drink water. Oh, something about it. I like that we went with this muddy water. The, the response to it in the comments was also pretty good. Uh, I like that we went with this. I feel like it. Oh, look at that. Look, it just, it just, it's so, it's so good. It's like the mouth being wet like that. It's so good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it, it works nicely with a little story we were talking about with, you know, the mud washing off and stuff. Buddy, you should, like, move elsewhere. Can you imagine this thing rolling on that and just, like, rolling everywhere? Kind of a little lie down. While like you're making your way back. Go slowly ambling over. Such interesting forms on their, uh, like, at their joints, like the legs and the neck and stuff. The folds and, and all that. So interesting. You gotta wonder how these animals feel sometimes, you know, like in terms of comfort level. You know, like in the in the sweltering heat, like can they feel their skin like sticking to itself and stuff? Like, that? I don't know. You, you, I can't be the only one who thinks about this kind of stuff, right? Like, is it comfortable to lie down and, and stand up? Like, uh, I think about that with like camels, especially. Like, camels have a very I've mentioned this before. Camels have a very funny way of like standing up and, and sitting down. Uh, and if you ever ride a camel. Uh, it's almost like a roller coaster when it starts to stand up or, or sit down. And um, I wonder, like, how does a camel feel about that? Surely, surely your evolution hasn't been so poor that even just getting up and sitting down uh, is a chore, right? Uh, however, I say that and then I think about like, well, when, we, when, when humans age, oh, look at that. Why are you so cute? Hey, I asked you a question. Alright. Alright, okay, fine. I'm really pleased with the space. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, <laughs> humans, when they get older, they, uh... They too start to have trouble getting up and sitting down. Are you gonna play with this thing? I'm so... I really wanna see it. Oh! What? Is that it? It just is literally them being curious about the ball? Is that- Oh my god, I thought you were gonna fall off here. Yo, you have all this step to walk on and you choose the edge. Oh, daredevil over here. Alright, fair enough. Where's the tennis ball? No one's touched it yet. Going up to the forbidden corner again. Yeah, I guess it's just that they're curious about this ball. You know what would be really cool? It'd be really cool to actually see um, why an animal tends to like a certain- uh, toy. That would be a cool, th uh, again, just speaking out loud over here, you know, it's easy to make requests and, 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 and dream. That'd be a cool thing to have in, uh, in Planet Zoo, though, is like, okay, well, you know, if the, you've put the Curio, Curio Ball in with the Fennec Fox, or even just a Curio Ball on, you know, as a, as a regular thing, oh, it fulfills, uh, an animal's natural desire to, you know, I don't know, whatever, whatever. Different, different animals, different toys, different needs are fulfilled, and this is a, is a reason why toys kind of work, right? Animals like to, uh, uh, to to sharpen their teeth or, or 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 maintain, I should say, their teeth, and you give them something to like, you know, those like salt salt cubes and stuff, or um, yeah, uh, give, like run, running on blanks over here as far as examples are concerned. But like, you can very clearly see animals having different uh, reasons to enjoy different uh, toys. I'm like a cat chasing a uh, something that's designed to look like it's prey, right? You, it's, it's an obvious connection, like, okay, well, it looks like it's prey it, it, if you... Oh, you're so cute. It, if you move it around as if it were its prey, like, it immediately engages, right? Um, but they're the, the less obvious ones. Like, okay, why is a fennec fox... Are fennec... I'm so glad I was here for that. I did not expect that coming. They're the tippy taps. Like, are fennec foxes just naturally curious animals? Um... You know, who else cares about the, the Curie Ball? Like, I can I can understand why an anteater, for example, might want to use the Termite Mound to eat from, but uh, what about others, right? Like, uh, this, is, this is amazing. Oh, I'm just getting to a stop. Just gonna have a lie down over here? All right, fair enough. In the shade of this uh, this tree? Well, half and half, I guess. I'm gonna catch a funny tan line. All right, you do you. Have it your way, have it your way. Don't use the giant shaded... Um, underground little cellar area I made for you. That's fine. You do you. All right, I was doing. We're still, man. We're still quite far away. And it's like time is moving at a snail's pace. Sometimes it feels like watching these rhinos, especially, makes me feel like time's moving slowly. They're just such low 
ambling creatures taking their time to anything. Just out for a walk. Yep. Enjoying the sun. Enjoying the attention. Had a good meal just a couple minutes ago. Pretty nice space. Interesting new building off in the distance. A little bit of sightseeing. So slow. You'd think I was playing in slow motion. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Though their neck is not supposed to bend that way. Where is my Fennec Fox? Here you are. Literally got you highlighted. They're just so great. <laughs> Still no luck with a baby, eh? Still luck, not quite yet. And sorry, how far away from are we from the uh, the rhino? October of next year, we're a whole year away. Kind of tempted to uh, fast forward time. Oh. I'm guessing some animal escaped somewhere. I'm guessing it's a giant otter. Well, we'll just wait until it gets captured. Um, you know, one thing I should check actually it just reminds me. Ah, huh. that's wild. Either I got very lucky. Or I'm starting to like intuit these animals a bit better. Like I got, how did I manage to get this? All right, okay, fair enough. Pulled it off somehow. Worked out. Like I said, I turned the settings on, right? So it's uh, nice to see that it worked out. What about our uh, meerkats here? Where are you? There we are. Hey, buddy. Oh, hey guys, but they're not too happy. Too much short grass, not enough soil, and sand. Alright. Go ahead and correct that a little bit, why not? Got the tools for it. Over here. Had a feeling, not enough soil either. Just gonna get some soil in here, there we go. Huge space too. Fall down. On the other side over here, we got this as well, of course. What is it? Which is included in their space. And there's some soil out over here. Stuff gets rid of the short grass as well, right? More down over here. Yeah, I guess they really do prefer their sandier, muddier, soilier environments, right? There we go. We got some more sand in as well. Down the edges. Need more sand. There we go. Beautiful. Glad I've, uh, glad I've turned that on. Again, great suggestion. It was, uh, it slipped my mind, like, how, like, yeah, this is a part, this is an important part of the, uh, looking at the animals and, 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 and judging their enclosures and stuff. Alright, back to our Fennec Foxes. This guest seems happy. Guess they're doing well. Where are you guys? Come here, buddy. Guys? <laughs> Where'd they go? Trying to spot them without using the thing to highlight them. Oh, there they are. Look at that, like tucked away, hiding in there. Completely tucked away. I thought they were little like gaps in the in the in the in the bed of leaves. Oh my god, they're so cute. Way too cute. Nothing has a right to be this cute. Off you go. Look at how quick they move too. Oh, so much fun. The animation is so spot on. Oh, are you about to use this thing? Or knock it over? I guess that's a way of using it. <laughs> Fair enough. Having a good time. Look at those ears just wiggle. There's just so much like secondary motion going on there. Hey, buddy. Oh, look at that. This <laughs> is so cute. Going in for some seconds. Alright, fair enough. I'm not here to judge. Yeah, quite quite pleased with how this worked out. I do wish there were more uh, flexi color pieces. But I'd say this worked out well enough. I can't get over the little barks and yelps and stuff. Even more? Wow. How do you fit so much food in there? Alright. 
on this side we have some more decorative elements. I wonder if I should pull some of these over to the other side, right? Just to add a bit more uh, detail up over here. Could do, could do. But again, that's not why we're here primarily, obviously. There we go. Are you done now? Now you're done. Like a giant. <laughs> I could do this forever. I really could. But I probably shouldn't. Oh, look at that. Perfect stopping point. I love it. Just, just look at that. Look at those eyes. Look at how big those eyes are. I mean, and yes, the ears as well. The ears are also huge, obviously. But look at those eyes. They're such, such big eyes and the tiny little nose. This guy. That coloration. Gorgeous. They fit quite nicely into the space, actually, in terms of... Uh, the, the color. That was not intentional. I, I wasn't sure if that would work out. Like I, I see when I think about Fennec foxes, I sorry typically think about um, yeah this coloration, like a much more vibrant. So that's what I had in my head, uh, as as inaccurate as that might be. What I kind of had in my head, but uh, but they actually fit quite nicely with the uh, the overall tone of uh, of all the um uh, like architectural work in in the area as well. Good stuff, good stuff. But folks, this is actually where we're going to call it a session today. Running a little late on uh, uploading this one. I don't want to be too late on uploading. I want to make sure it goes out on time. Uh, I like to try and maintain a schedule as best as possible. So I suppose next time, what I might actually do before I load in next time is I might fast forward time so we have our baby um, hippo and uh, and maybe a, a pregnancy at least with our fennec foxes or something. Because I want to make sure we see the babies before we call it an end to this mini series. And uh, at this rate, you know, next session, if I'm not mistaken, next session is going to be our last one, right? Because we have... The, uh, no, not, not the, what else do we have that came in? Or, hmm, I'm trying to slip my mind. I do know there's the, uh, the scarab, which is, uh, I remember my first exposure to the scarab beetle was the mummy movie. Now, if you haven't seen the mummy movie with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Wise, you should correct that mistake. Excellent movie. Um, but, uh, that was my first exposure to, to the scarab beetle. But I was so sure that there was another animal in this pack, and I cannot now, for the life of me, remember it. And I can't, the funny thing is these, you can't filter these based on animal packs. I can, I'll, obviously I'll check the DLC page to, to double check and, and make sure I've got it right. But uh, we will take a look at that. And actually, actually, before I forget, because I wanted to check this a couple sessions ago. Uh, if we check out the Nyala. Uh, the Nyala only gets along with the Southern White Rhinoceros. Someone pointed out that uh, in the comments that uh, in this batch of animals, the Nyala was a new addition. Uh, and they were like... Well, maybe it's because the Nyala is only compatible or, or only gets a benefit from the Southern White Rhino. Uh, and I was like, oh yeah, good point. I, I felt like something was off on this page and I didn't realize it was the Nyala. Uh, but as you can see, it's because the Nyala is only compatible or, or, or only benefits the Southern White Rhino and, and vice versa. But of course, remember that doesn't mean that the Nyala cannot live also with the rest of these guys, right? Just because you don't get an interspecies benefit doesn't mean they can't share a space without uh, harnessing a benefit. So that's just something interesting to consider if you're making a giant uh, space for, for a bunch of animals like, for example, we're doing at uh, Elite Zoo uh, South right now, uh, or, well, after this DLC showcase is done. So just something to, to, to think about. Uh, but either way, folks, like I was saying, that is it for today's session. I'm trying to figure out how I want to... By the way, like, it, it's funny, because this is all, like, desert animals and stuff. You can see how, like, lush that space is versus how like somewhat barren and stuff this space is obviously it's a desert area makes sense but i wonder what we can do to like kind of uh make it feel a bit more full obviously we're not putting in stalls or anything like that vendor stalls or anything like that that would that would make a bit of a difference but something to think about something to mull over maybe but folks i hope you enjoyed this session if you did you know what to do let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment as always it makes a very big difference in just letting me know what i should or shouldn't do on the channel what i should stop what i should slow down what i should speed up uh, again, it's part of the reason why we do these mini-series for the DLC now is because of the responses I've seen between my various ways of covering the DLC, and this one is by far, uh, I think, the most enjoyed by all of y'all, and also for myself as well. It gives me an opportunity to take a break from the hustle and bustle of franchise mode, focus on the animals, focus on some builds that I might not otherwise be able to uh, explore or do, and uh, and yeah, just, uh, just check out the animals. Folks, again, hope you had a good time. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.